Good morning. We're here to discuss week 24 in Silicon Valley real estate market. We're starting off and looking at the sale price to list price distribution for each week. The most current week is the purple week. You can see that it hasn't changed much from the burnt orange line, which was the previous week, but it has come down quite a bit since March 26, the peak of the real estate market this cycle. And in fact, March 26, 2022 was the peak of the real estate market ever. That was the best week we've ever had in Silicon Valley. Dotted lines are the oldest, the down Dashed lines are the next oldest and the solid lines are the most recent. What happened is the market accelerated in the early spring, then it turned around and slowly came back down. Keep in mind, even though this is down from where we've been, 75% of the sellers are still getting over their asking price and only something around 17% are getting below their asking price and all but 5% are getting within 5% of their asking price. So it's still a pretty aggressive marketplace, even though it is slower down. Same data, just the last 12 weeks in groups of four, same concept, the dotted lines, the March 26 is off, but March, uh, April 2nd was very similar and that's the top dotted line. And again, dotted lines are the oldest, then dashed lines, and then the solid lines. And you can see here, it pretty much went from the top straight down. There was a little bit of a bounce when you were at the plateau, but more sort of on the downward cruise. Here's just looking at the number of offers accepted. This is looking at all four counties, San Mateo County, Contra Costa County, Alameda County, and Santa Clara County, just to give you an idea what's happening with the volume of sales. So this is the volume of number of offers accepted. The gray line is the pandemic shelter in place being announced and not being able to show property for a while and then the fairly quick recovery. The broad blue line is the current data, 2022. And you can see up till about April 9th, it was the second best year. Second best only to 2021. 2021 was sort of a record year recently because of the lack of transactions in 2020 from COVID spilled over. And those transactions happened in 2021, which is why the highest volume happened. 2022 was second only to 2021. We were doing really well. Right around April the 9th, something fairly significantly happened. And fairly rapidly, we went to basically the worst year. We started off as the worst year except for uh, 2020 because of the COVID. But now in the recent weeks, we're actually doing worse than 2020 because 2020 recovered so quickly that the 2020 sales were sort of up in the normal volume. So here you can see 2022 volume of sales down, you know, between 800 and 900 transactions for all the all four counties and both types of properties. But you know, the market should be more like 1150. So you're somewhere 200 transactions short, that's almost 20%. This is doing it on a percentage basis for, because the yellow line is exactly 100% of the five-year meeting. The five-year meeting is 2015 through 2019. And then what you're looking at is two lines for supply. The number of new listings is the gray line. And basically the gray line has been right about the level that you'd expect the number of new listings. Last year, the gray line was slightly above the yellow line, but not dramatically. The rust color line is the number of offers. And you can see starting right around week 15, there was a significant drop. I think that corresponds right to that April 9th time frame that I was talking about. This is probably April the 9th, and then you boom, you drop down. And what used to be a demand-driven hot real estate marketplace because we were selling about, well, in 2021, we were selling about 15% more inventory than we normally do. In 2022, we were selling about 10% more inventory. Now, all of a sudden, you're selling about 85% of the inventory that you normally do. And so, boom, the gas pedal comes off pretty quickly. You can see inventory came up. You know, inventory is not skyrocketing. In fact, inventory right now is about uh, uh, right where you'd expect it to be. Number of new listings is about what you expect it to be and the number of offers accepted is about 80% of what you'd expect. I will caution this week, any data that involves volume, which all these numbers involve volume, and even things like DUI, that's the current inventory versus the number of sales is going to be a little bit off from my normal data. And the reason for that is the MLS interface that I use to normally get this information stopped updating on Thursday. So there was no update for Thursday and Friday. So if I use my normal source, 
I would have only had 60% of the data. So I went to my backup source and that shouldn't cause a problem, but there's nuances in the data. So that's why I don't flip flop between the two of them. And with statistics, as long as you be consistent, it's valuable. But I'm just warning the exact volume this week is off compared to where it normally is. Now, when my primary MLS gets their act back together, I'll get on and I'll update this week's data and use it to go going forward so that we won't have the discrepancy. The discrepancies are fairly minor, but you can, they might show up in unexpected ways and you just have to not rely on it as much as you'd like to. This is looking at DUI. DUI, the yellow line now is instead of a percentage is the raw count. Using the five good base years of 15 through 19, we've been in a seller's marketplace and it's normally rising at this time of the year. And so it is rising. And and it's rising a little bit more rapidly, but it's still pretty aggressive. You're just over 40 days. So you're just in that balanced marketplace. But for the most part, buyers aren't going to sense that yet. Sellers aren't going to sense it yet. You're going to have to get up here more like 70 days, 80 days before, or be around 60 days for a long period of time before people will start really feeling that equal footing. But we're still an aggressive marketplace. We've clearly slow, slowed down. Again, here's about that April the 9th number. So you can see we're we were down somewhere around 18 days of unsold inventory. And now you're probably somewhere around 43 or 42, probably closer to 42. It's quite a bit slower than it was, but it's still overall a pretty aggressive market. This is looking at the number of new listings up here in the blue and then the number of new offers. And again, these might be off some, but the trend is going to be the representative. And you can see that we have more new listings coming on the marketplace than we do offers taking it off the marketplace. So that's going to have your inventory growing. DUI, again, one of the key indicators, this number is up a little bit higher. This is 48, 47, 48. I'd have to dig in and find out why this might be all four counties. And here's your average and average and median days on market. You can see it really hasn't changed like DUI, which is why DUI is a, a better indicator to follow. It, you can see the changes of the marketplace more rapidly, more timely. Here is your sale price to list price ratio, the frequency, basically somewhere all, above 80% of the sellers are getting more than their asking price. On average, they're getting about 10% over their asking price. And the median is somewhere probably around 108 and a half percent or so over their asking price. So all fairly strong indicators. Again, sale price requires escrows to be closed. So that's sort of a lagging indicator. Most people follow the median price. So you can see the median price peak and then it's come down. This is macro data. So I believe this is going to be Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, condos and townhouses on a blender only. This is looking at the number of vo volume and we're looking at the number of offers. So you can see in the last week, we're at about 864, 864. So that's down quite a bit. And you can see it's the lowest by quite a bit out of the last eight years. So this is looking, adding in Alameda and Contra Costa County. So you have the four top counties. You have single family homes over on the left. You have condos and townhouses on the right. What you can look at is the number of new listings. You can see that they're not dramatic changed or up and down. And again, remember anything to do with count, which number of new listings, active listings all have count is going to be a little different this week, just because I'm using the backup MLS. Total number of active listings, again, nothing dramatic one way or the other. Offers accepted all over the board, down 18%, down 14%, but up 12%, up 22%. So again, all over the board. Condos are a little bit more on the negative side, but minus 1.5%, plus 3%. But minus 20%, minus 20%. In single family homes, the number of new listings is up 4%. The number of new offers is up 6, 3%. Not a huge change. Then what you're looking at, that was one week. Then we'll come down here and look at five weeks worth of data because five weeks is more stable. You can see down 1.4%. 1, 1. So not dramatically any changes. You can see. DUI is right around that cusp of 41 for single family homes, a little bit more fluctuation because you have Contra Costa at 29 days, which is looks like the fastest DUI out there by quite a bit. Then you come down to the number of closings. Looks like I didn't update the number of closings. The number of closings for five weeks is going to be pretty accurate because you're only losing two days out of 35. But again, they're going to be a little bit low. But the rest of the data, the frequency of overbidding, the magnitude of overbidding, and that kind of stuff is not going to change based on the volume. 
appreciation you can see is pretty robust in the single family homes, uh, not as robust in the condos and townhouses, but still in the positive direction. That's over 2020. So it's a two year essential appreciation. So that's a recap for us. Any quick questions? Not seeing any questions. We'll go on and we'll come back to these URLs at the end. Now what you're looking at is the total active inventory in the blue compared to the five year median. Right now, we're exactly the level of inventory that you expect to have. Yes, we went up a little bit earlier this year, but it also looks like we're rolling over already. So it looks like we're sort of going to keep with the same uh, level of inventory as a five-year median. Keep in mind that 15 through 19 were five great years. So if you had the same inventory level as a great year, you should still have a good year. The number of new listings, you can see it has tracked amazingly well. It's probably one of the best tracking data points on all my data. Number of new offers, you can see going back to that April the 9th timeframe, all of a sudden you went from uh, above the level of sales activity that you'd expect to below. And it looks like we're staying below. This is DUI. This blue line here is sort of my five day per week gain. And you can see we're clearly a little bit below that. If we were equal to it, the gap here would just be the same as the gap here. And it clearly is not. But up here in these last couple of weeks, and this is April 1st way back here. So this is basically only about three or four weeks. We've been coming pretty close to that match. Now, normally that would send off alarm bells for me, but this is a time of the year when DUI normally increases. So an increase of five per week is actually a little bit less than five if you're normally increasing at this time of the year. This is the map of DUI and you can see how pale it is and you can see most of the numbers are fairly high. I believe this is before, and I'm almost confident this was before I caught the fact that I was missing two days of inventory, two days of transactions. So these numbers are going to be all artificially high, which is going to make the graph artificially uh, whiter than it should be. Again, this is the same data, but it's just showing you over time. You can see how the intensity of red has dropped as we've gone to on in time. Even if 6 June 18th is going to be a little paler than it should be, the trend is still pretty apparent. This is the frequency of overbidding. You can see we're still above 80%. On the left side of the purple line is 2020. On the right side is 2021. This is DUI overbidding. This is the frequency of overbidding over time. You can see we rolled over, but we're not coming down. We're staying up there. What's happening is it's buyers are now conditioned to overbidding. So they're not opposed to doing that, but the magnitude of which they're doing it is dropping fairly significantly. And this is the frequency, much redder graph, but remember it just requires sale price. So these are transactions that really happened five weeks earlier. I expect this graph is going to be coming paler in the not distant future. But again, the frequency is going to probably be the last thing to come down because all you have to do is overbid by, you know, a couple a thousand dollars and now you're overbidding and you're contributing to the red. The magnitude is would be the next one to come down. And here's the magnitude. You can see the magnitude is coming down. We're down under 108%, which is where we were most of 2021. Not dramatically, but you know, most sellers would take 7% more than their asking price. It's going to be t interesting to see what happens with the marketing strategy. A lot of listing agents have gotten the position of just putting prop and any price out there, prices that they, their seller and they would not recommend accepting and expecting the overbidding. If the magnitude of overbidding is getting very conservative, that may not happen. It might be necessary for listing agents to start pricing their listings with a little bit more price transparency. This is the magnitude of overbidding over time, and you can see how it come over and actually come down. It's not plateaued like the magne uh, the frequency, but has actually come down. And number-wise, you're up here, what, 117%, and now you're down to something like 113%, maybe? And I, I'm pretty confident that graph's not cutting off, but I will check it for next week. I think it's going out to July the 1st. Here's the magnitude of overbidding geographically. This is definitely paler than the frequency of overbidding that I showed just a few slides ago. This 
shows how much the buyers are over willing to pay. Cupertino, Sunnyvale is probably one of the highest areas at 14% over. The other high area is right now is the North San Mateo County uh, area up here around Daly City and Coma and areas like that. But you got a fair number of areas around 112%, 110% when you come down to Santa Clara County. So still fairly strong overbidding. This shows the sale price. The red line is the median sale price. The yellow is the cheapest 10 percentile. And the brown is the highest 90 percentile. This is sale price of single family homes only geographically on a map for you. The middle number is the median. The higher number is the 90 percentile, the most expensive. And the number to the left is the lowest. If we pick an area like Saratoga, Las Gatos, you can see that basically their price range of homes is from 2.4. 4 million to 5.5 million with a median of 3.7 million. And here is the weekly appreciation. And again, my base I'm using for measuring appreciation is the entire calendar year 2020. And then comparing this week's closings to that number, you can see the last time that any area had a record price was back on May 28th. And by record price, it could be a tie because the tie I equal as a record, a new record. What What's really interesting is looking at condos in San Mateo County and even in Santa Clara County expensive areas, there's been basically no appreciation and actually a little loss, a minor loss since 2020. And it's happened fairly quickly because you just go back four weeks and you were 17% above the price from 2020. Now you're four tenths of a percent below in the base cities, which are Burlingame, Belmont, San Carlos, Redwood City, Foster City. You're 1.4% down and not long ago, you were almost 15% above. A lot more fluctuation because there isn't as many data points, so it fluctuates. But, you know, if you come up to a fairly large area, you know, the moderate areas, you're at 35% down from 48. So you're, you know, 49, you've dropped 14%. Now, it's my belief that some of this up here was the overshoot of the froth in the marketplace, and that was never sustainable. But it'd be interesting to see what happens long term with these numbers. This is now your key numbers, your most recent DUI, which again, are probably higher than the real numbers because of the issue with the MLS, the frequency of overbidding, and you can see it's slightly darker than the magnitude of overbidding. This numbers, I think, will come down most dramatically. The these colors are not linked other than my trying to link them via what's the definition of a strong marketplace. So there's a more, you can have a bigger change in, in one or the other, and it shouldn't really show in the data. It's more trying to sense where a strong seller's marketplace is. And then on the pricing here for county data, I do it in thousands. So it really jumps out at you as, hey, what's going on? And there's it's not color coded because it's not on the map. And then all, all the individual micro market areas are in millions. And the concept's the same, the 10 percentile on the left, median in the middle, and 90 percentile on the right. This is your summary of your key components. When a number is red, it's sort of indicating that it's a hot marketplace. And I guess I should have changed Santa Clara County to neutral because now it did bump up above 95%. I didn't catch that. At 124% of the inventory, that would be a cooling indicator, 158%. So definitely a cooling indicator. Here's your DUI, you know, basically in the low 40s. So you're just going into that balanced marketplace from 40 to 80 is what I consider to be a balanced marketplace. And that's why these high 30s are still red. That would have been a strong seller's marketplace. Frequency of overbidding, you can see is more stable. You're still mostly in the 80s. Anything above 50%, I consider to be a strong seller's marketplace. On the magnitude of overbidding, anything over 1.5%, I consider to be a pretty strong seller's marketplace. With the recent trends, I may have to increase that number because you know buyers are conditioned and listing agents are conditioned that buyers will pay over. And so a 1.5% overbid is not anything significant like it used to be years ago. Uh, and then this is the appreciation. It's interesting in San Mateo County, single family homes countywide, you're 22.6% above the 2020 pricing, which sounds like a great appreciation. 23% in two years, 11.5% a year. 
but after one year in 2021, it already peaked out at 24.6%. So it's actually down 2% from 2021. And again, that's a little bit of fluctuation because this you know, could be an exceptionally strong week. But you can see it got all the way up to 37.7% this year, and it's come down quite a bit. This is not comparing apples and apples, but it's trying to be forward looking. I'm bringing up July data because, and which is not available until July the July the 6th. I need five days out of July to get to 35 days because I start on June the 1st and go through for 35 days. And here we're only to June 18th. So in this case, I go back 35 days. So it starts sometime in mid-May. But what are the big takeaways? Inventory is at 1,067. And that's sort of an upper number compared to re recent years, but it isn't a record number by any stretch. If you go back to when there was more real estate activity that was happening, you know, recent years is a better telling factor. Also in general, the inventory tends to continue to go up until about the middle of July. July 19th is the day I normally peg that at. And so this is going to be a pretty high number. Will it catch almost 1,400? I don't think so. So it'll probably come in with the second highest inventory. Average days, meaning days, I don't expect to change. DUI, if you look at that at 43.8, the only year that was higher, and it was basically the same order of magnitude, was 2019 when people were noticing a slowdown. It's definitely different than we've been recently, but 43 days is still a fairly aggressive marketplace. Number of sales per day, that's pretty significant. Only 24. And I believe this number, you know, this number here is probably not updated. This is probably missing two out of 35 days. So it's missing almost 10%. So this probably should be close to the, you know, some number like 935, it's going to go up a little bit, but still even at 935, it's going to be the record low number of sales. And since the peak of the sales activity is the five weeks before Memorial Day, I think we're going to turn in the lowest number of transactions, offers accepted in the month of June, essentially, than we've ever have. So that's a pretty significant drop in volume. Here's your magnitude of overbidding. You can see you're still at 109.7% fairly aggressive, one of the best years. So even though the volume of sales has dropped off, the buyers are still overbidding and doing so fairly aggressively. The frequency of overbidding is going to be the second best year that we've had. And then your median price, and this for the record is single family homes in Santa Clara County only. It's not macro data. And the median sale price is 18, 20, 20, 18, 20. And that was what I was starting to say earlier is the median I believe got as high as 1967. So you're down $150,000 basically from your peak and the number of closings is basically a record low and I would expect the number to continue to drop so it will probably be the lowest number of closings in the month of June and then with that we go back and we try to compare apples and apples because now we're looking back into May we're looking in the rearview mirror we're past June this 5th so all this data is apples and apples comparison and if we look at some of the key data points we look at 1,009 transactions it was the second lowest year on record the only year that was uh, lower than that was 20 2020 when we were still coming out of the pandemic and that was the initial shelter in place and then the number of closings is going to be down here i would have thought that had been flagged okay it's not flagged it's down here at 20 uh, 1042. So obviously 2020 was worse, but ignoring that, there was a lot of years that are right in that same order of magnitude. So as far as closings, we're not at a record low, but when you start getting up into the number of offers accepted during the month of May, it was a record low May. So, you know, the, again, that all goes along with the market turning right around that April the 9th timeframe that I talked about. And with that, I'll pause and see if there's any questions while you're getting your questions organized. The green is the root URL here, tinyurl.com backslash S-V-R-E-M-G, and that gets you the archives of these presentations. If you add in 2022, that gets you to the live presentation Saturday morning at 9 a.m., and I appreciate it a couple more people will join. And if you add in the letter H and the four-digit year, two-digit month, which would be 06, two-digit year, which would be month, day, which would be 
18. And you would get to the handout, which is posted for those that want it. And with that, I'll see if there's any questions. Not seeing any questions. Everybody have a nice weekend.